when I started at Telefonica, I was asked to look after innovations. Uh, network innovation being one of them, but service innovation being more important. Um, and very quickly, it occurred that, yes, innovation is hard and costly. If when you have, when you have an idea and you want to implement it, you have to touch every single little box that you showed every single little interface. And this is why, as an industry, we come to a point where whenever we want to launch a new service or even make a change to an existing service, it takes 18 months and $5 million, and you have to talk to 20 vendors. That doesn't yield to a very innovative environment. Um, it produces an environment where um, basically you have a lot of people, people that are paid to maintain what is existing and make sure that it's not going to break. Um, and if, and there will be innovation, but innovations are, you know, aggregated with larger industry changes, such as next generation of networks, so that, well, if you're going to break something, if you're going to make something new, let's do a whole lot of things at the same time and let's try to manage it um, in, um, well, in a, in a more um, managed fa fashion. The difficulty here, obviously, is that we haven't been very good at doing that. I mean, we've been very good at doing the basics. We've been very good as an industry at creating a number of services that we can all share um, now across the planet. I mean, you can make a call, send a text, send an email, browse a web page, pretty much anywhere. And that's fantastic. But that's not sufficient. I mean, we've created four services that work very well for everybody. Um, but that's not what our users, uh, consumers, and enterprise value the most, or are going to value the most in the future and giving them more capacity, more speed, uh, more availability is what they expect. But where the value is going to be is creating experiences that are a little bit distinct. Um, so as you mentioned, one of the difficulties as well is that our networks have born, have evolved organically um, on a fixed side, on the wireless side, on the cable side, on the fiber side. And, well, people, enterprise, don't think that way. They don't think as a service as being attached to a specific technology. Um, we need to change that. So, well, um, one thing to do that is to rethink the networks, simplify the networks. Simplify the networks because first there's a lot of, a lot of things that we're living with today that are not necessarily, you know, part of what we should be doing in the future. Um, there are a lot of network elements that in a virtualized world don't make very much sense. And, um, well, there are new technologies such as software-defined networking, network function virtualization, and as well, uh, new opportunities such as open source environment that allow us basically to give us tools to take back the control as uh, operators to create things that are simpler and faster. And that's where automation comes in. Obviously, if you want to create networks that are not um, going to provide four services to everybody the same way, but maybe 200 services, it's going to become extraordinarily complex. And I think we're ready and willing to manage the complexity from a service perspective, but it cannot um, translate into a increasing complexity at the architectural and at um, the traffic level. So we have to simplify our network and we have to automate it. The automation, really in a multi-vendor environment, is extremely difficult to achieve. Yes, I can go to a vendor tomorrow that can deliver me a service 
that is going to be automated. It's going to be automated maybe just, you know, in the core or maybe in the radio. Having one service that is automated, one slice from the internet to the core, to the edge, to the radio is very difficult, but probably possible with one vendor, proprietary. But that doesn't really resolve our problem because as operators, we want to provide value. Providing value in a, an environment that is very penetrated and mature is going to come from differentiation. Differentiation is not going to come from buying the same software solution or hardware solution from the same vendor that are going to deploy it at your competitor next month. It's going to come from being able to adapt your network yourself. So what do we do? Well, that's where you know Understanding which parts of the network are legacy, which part of the network are ready to evolve, which part of the network do not add value to providing a new experience to the user is important. Because then you can focus on the parts of the network that where you can add value, where you should add value as an operator, where you should take control, where you should invest. To do that, you need developers, and you need to be able to get your hands dirty because, and that's where open source come in, a lot of the work that we're seeing, a lot of the vision that we want to enable could be enabled just by vendors, could be enabled by vendors in a single siloed architecture. We want as an industry to enable this in a multi-vendor open uh, uh, perspective. And to do that, well, we need to shoulder a little bit of the work ourselves, network operators. That means more developers, that means developers that are focusing on orchestration, and developers that are developing things that are open source that can be shared across the value chain and across our industry. Thank you.